Well, I'm very happy to hear your comments. It's very interesting how uh, how you can actually visit uh, Egypt for for a few days and come back with this very uh, strong research that just negates the fact of uh, some of the Egyptians who say that uh, those who live outside Egypt cannot understand or realize the, the problems. Uh, I like how you detail the, the the political you know the political challenges that we're facing in, in the country, and I think you are fairly right in in, uh, in your analysis. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, uh, I'm not that happy to be here while in Egypt. Uh, there are, there's a lot of heat happening recently because of the people losing patience, and uh, and I, I agree with them for, for what is happening uh, uh, in the country, and uh, uh, where we want to see the revolution to uh, uh, we want to see the results of the re revolution as soon as possible. Um, so. The, the one thing I keep reminding myself of is that this revolution cannot go wrong. And we have to keep fighting. And fighting here doesn't necessarily mean going and protesting here only. It, it can also mean fighting as in making sure that the goals of the revolution, where over 800 people have sacrificed their lives, uh, are going to uh, be achieved. Um, and that uh, those who lost their eyesight, and uh, I know I, I've met a lot of people, and one of them was actually in, uh, in Mbaba. Uh, I decided one day, before the, before the sad incidents in Mbaba, I decided to, um, to go in and, and, and just visit the people. I went to the streets of Mbaba, not knowing anyone. I asked them, do you know anyone who, uh, you know, who got injured during the revolution? They're like, yeah, there is uh, um, this man, I'm not going to say his, his name, let's call him Muhammad for now. Uh, Muhammad, uh, uh, he, he lives in, in, in one of the side streets. So I went to Muhammad, he is 50-something uh, uh, years old. Uh, he was not a young Egyptian, he was actually a senior Egyptian. I think 50 is, is young, so. Uh, he was a senior Egyptian, and uh, uh, Muhammad lost both of his eyes. And, uh, uh, and not only he lost both of his eyes, um, there was a very strong chance that Muhammad can see again after what happened to him because he was shot on his face. But because of the, the incidents, he, and, and he cannot afford uh, to go to a private hospital, he basically couldn't get the treatment he deserved to get as, as someone who, who was part of this revolution. And, uh, uh, and basically, he, he lost both of his eyesight. And I asked him, are you, are you, you know, I'm really sorry for you. I feel bad that this happened to you. And he's like, I'm okay. I just want to make sure that, you know, what we fought for is, is, is going to happen. And uh, it just makes me and, uh, and everyone that I say the story to feel, uh, feel responsible. We, we have a huge responsibility that this cannot go wrong. And if we let this go wrong, uh, we, we will have a lot to pay for, for the families of the, the people who lost their lives. Um, so, in order for that to happen, was it that? Despite what is happening, I want, uh, ultimate, uh, I'm sure you're going to ask me questions about that, but despite what is happening right now, we're all in the driver's seat, and it's up to us to decide, of we, do we want this to go forward, or do we want to, uh, to keep, if, if it's a car, do we want to keep going on the side, you know, sideways and, uh, uh, and forget our, our main goal? Um, and I think the Egyptians outside for living abroad um, have a huge responsibility today. There, even the Egyptians living inside Egypt didn't have that sense of ownership in the past because of the regime. We had a very known statement. Uh, they, they, this was a quote even in movies. Uh, uh, no, this, is, this is their country. This is not our country. We don't belong, you know, we live here, but we don't feel that this is our country. It's the country of the 0.5% of the people who pretty much control all the power, you know, all sort of like political power and, and economical power in, in the country. This needs to change. And El Balad uh, Baladna is one of the things I believe in. I, I believe that this is our country and I have a right to say 
uh, as a citizen, not, uh, not as anything else, to say, uh, or to have a say in what is happening in this country. Um, the past, uh, during the, you know, the, the past few, I would say the decade, a lot of the people, the Egyptians who traveled abroad, lost their sense of ownership. They still admire the country. They still, you know, listen to Umu Kalsum and remember the, the very old days, or Amr the for the new generation. <laughs> and, uh, and remember the, the days where they visit Cairo, or they, or they visit Egypt, sorry, or they uh, uh, watch movies about, you know, Egyptian movies. Uh, today, there is a great chance to, to get back to your ownership, to, to own the country back. You guys are mostly well educated. You probably went to MIT, which I can't even spell the what the what M stands for. <laughs> <laughs> or or Harvard, or you know, some of you have been living here for so many years. That they were fortunate enough to to experience what democracy means. When I when I came, I visited the U.S. Unlike what the people say about me, I'm not a CIA agent. I never went to CIA. I visited the U.S. during September 11th, and I had nothing to do with what happened here. <laughs> and the the one thing that that when I came here for the first time, I was like, wow, it's like is, is someone fooling us in, in 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 Egypt? Like, why is this why this country is so nice and so good, and our country is so bad? And I was 20 years old at that time. I think you guys can, can start transforming that feeling to the Egyptians to tell them that they deserve a life, a better life. The hard question starts. They they deserve a better life, and and that better life will not happen until we all start uh, owning this country, uh, and it will not happen until every one of you, as individuals, start believing uh, that they should contribute something to Egypt, not just by words or by simple donations to uh, uh, to charities in Egypt, but because money is not is, is never the answer to, to any uh, to any problem, and uh, uh, and you can you can take the USA as a as a good example for that. Um, it, it, it never it never reached the people the the people in Egypt. In fact, money sometimes uh, uh, create problems rather than solving them. We what we need is expertise. What we need is is is, uh, 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 is real help coming from people who decide to dedicate time and energy and uh, and and you know passion uh, to this to back to Egypt. And I've already seen a lot of Egyptians who are impressive and doing that. I just want to make sure that if if 100% of the Egyptians and even other uh, it doesn't have to be Egyptians, we all want the, the Egyptian model to succeed. We want to send a message to the dictators. Uh, of the world, not specifically the Arab ones, uh, of, of the whole world, that that what, what you are doing to your people is unfair. And look how look what happened in Egypt after uh, uh, it was liberated. Uh, Egypt, you know, is rising. We want to send that message. Um, so away from the uh, theoretical speech, I, I think there are many things that you can work on at the moment. One. Um, I proposed an idea to the to the community in California uh, to basically find a poor community in Egypt, uh, let's say Esbet and Stabla Antar, all these areas where uh, we call them in Egypt the Ashwaiyat, the Antar area, slum area. So uh, if, if you can sponsor a slum area, sponsor it from A to Z, work on everything, uh, help them with money, help create jobs for them. Whenever there are doctors who live here, go go back home and, and make sure that they dedicate time, um, just do the same. Um, we help them paint their houses, change their life. Uh, this would be an amazing contribution, and, I, and I'm hoping that this would be realized and then some other states would be jealous, or countries even like, you know, uh, Egyptians uh, or Arabs or even citizens of that country uh, start thinking, okay, I want to do that with another uh, uh, with another area. If, if we start showing the poor people that this revolution brought them something good, uh, then we are on the right track. Because uh, I, a very common word now I'm, I'm, I'm hearing uh, when I ask the, the poor people in the, in the streets uh, in, in Cairo, are you happy? 